Thank you very much for coming. Uh, I'm impressed how many people made it here in, at this early time, directly after the party. So thank you very much. I will now talk about modern network configuration on Linux, and I'm Till Mars. I uh, am involved in the Fedora project since 2005, and currently I'm serving in the Fedora Council. I'm also working in the networking services team at Red Hat, and they're providing abstractions on top of Network Manager to make it easier to configure networking. And therefore, most of my experience is from the Fedora CentOS or Well world. And I have also some insights into Debian regarding network configuration. But in case you have any remarks about uh, important or key interesting facts about other distributions, please let me know. And also, uh, you might hear it, I had a cold recently. I still have a cold, so my performance might be a little bit impaired. I hope uh, you can excuse this. Initially, uh, I want to take a short look into the historic interface of um, network configuration to see uh, why it's important to improve this. So initially, on RAIL or Fedora, there were these IFCFG files that were then used by an init scripts uh, file. And while they look like configuration files, they're actually shell scripts that define shell variables. And this means, uh, there's not really proper parsing going on, and of course you can also uh, do a lot of things. And I'm wondering, anyone familiar with these files? Please raise your hand. Okay, so please keep them up. And do you see a problem in this file speci specifically? So if you see a problem, please keep your hand up. Okay, it doesn't seem like anyone. And yeah, who said this? Yeah, well spotted, but you see it's hard to spot these kind of errors. You will get some uh, tweets afterwards, so Ellen, please come. And yeah, I will just show how this looks like in practice if you try to use uh, this kind of file. Okay, so this is a um, Fedora 31 system that uh, has this file already um, set up. And we can look at the uh, network configuration. Oh, it's already partly configured. And now um, if I do if up ETH1, which would be the command to configure it, we see, uh, first of all, the first problem is that this old thing is duplicated and it's not properly maintained anymore. Also, there seems there's a bug uh, in the system in general because it's using uh, the wrong path to a command, which is uh, not so nice. And also, if you now look at the uh, actual interfaces, we see that compared to prefer, uh, before, there's now um, IPv6 address configured, but it's just the link local address, not the actual address that we specified here, because uh, as Adam said, there's a typo in the file. And, uh, but we, we don't really get any feedback that there's a typo it just looks like it's partly broken in general, but not that's uh, working at all. So let's fix this. Now we see we have the address, and then uh, typically, you might note, uh, in a normal, normal situation, it might be that you uh, realize, oh no, I actually want to use a different IP address. So they changed it to 42. And uh, to apply it, use if up ETH1. And what would you expect? Anyone? No, I didn't. OK. You actually already expect this. But like, <laughs> as, as a normal user, if I say I only want this IP address in the configuration file, uh, I would expect, uh, without prior knowledge, that it's only that one. But it's not here. And we, so uh, with using this approach, you either need to clean up manually, or you need to do uh, if down, and then if up to properly uh, synchronize the state. But then uh, currently I'm lucky because that's not the management interface where I'm logging in. But if I'm logging in into this, it also means I, I might uh, lose access to the remote server. So uh, in general, it's also very dangerous to do things like this. And um, another problem that I also sometimes fell into back in the times 
was uh, then if you, for example, realize you don't need a certain network uh, connection anymore, then you will just remove it. You uh, think, oh yeah, I'm done, and then, oh no, I forgot to take it down. So the, but then the down command doesn't work anymore as well because it really needs the file and nothing keeps track of the actual connection and again, you are left to do all the cleanup yourself. So I would say it's a little bit dangerous uh, to, play, uh, to use this out file, especially if you want high availability and proper network configuration, or you need to like, reinvent a lot of things yourself. And, um, but of course, there's still a few advantages of using this, because uh, since it's just shell scripts, you, you can basically extend it to everything that you like, because it's programming, it's not configuring. Uh, and uh, because you do not have anything running there, no resources. Um, you use a lot of less resources uh, because after the network configuration, everything is done. To solve... <coughs> <coughs> oh, sorry. Uh, I, I will try to mute next time. Um, to solve... Um, if a few of these problems, Network Manager was created. So this is the new logo of Network Manager, in case you haven't seen it. You might also might be able to get some stickers. I'm not sure if you have some. Yeah, we have some. So if you want to have stickers for your uh, laptop, approach me later. And uh, initially, it was also created. Uh, so it's actually a daemon in handling the network connections. Initially, also to solve some problems when you have, uh, which you have at a desktop when you need to. Uh, have different profiles, for example, but it also contains features that make it better for servers to handle certain things. And uh, to make the uh, conversion easily, it also supports these IFCFG files as a backend by default on Fedora and Network Manager, but it doesn't treat them as shell scripts, but it tries to pass them. So, so you cannot do by default everything with it that you could do easily. And you also have uh, a few uh, command line tools that make things easier. And like, uh, for example, this is how it would look like if you do the same typing error uh, on the command line tool. Uh, you get immediately feedback that the configuration is wrong, uh, uh, that the uh, syntax is wrong, and then you realize, oh, it's the V that's missing. You can also take a look at a few of the other features. So this is now basically a similar system just uh, with Network Manager installed. So let me just show that uh, currently uh, ETH1 is not configured, and I have here uh, the command line to set up the connection. So as you can see, uh, it will complain if this is wrong. And now, um, for example, you can um, change IP addresses, the nmcli command to edit uh, the connection, then say IP, IPv6 dot address is uh, something else. And at this time, it will not, uh, it does not yet um, change the act actual interface. It will only um, change the configuration uh, on the system. So if we can still take a look at the IFCFG file, so we see it's already changed. And then uh, you have a different command, for example, um, <coughs> to actually apply this change uh, to, put, uh, to the runtime configuration. And now we will see uh, it will only have the um, the new IP address that you specify, like, so that, that the settings are completely in sync, and you don't have this problem that you uh, need to take down the interface. Um, but the um, uh, the um, network manager will just take care of it uh, by itself. But then. Um, Using all of this uh, does not really scale. So in case you want to do this uh, to a lot of machines, then you do not want to write your 
or you, you, basically you would have to write your own wrapper about NMCLI, or you need uh, some other solution to do this. Um, and also there might still be some problem, like, like currently I, I showed that if there's a syntax error, you, uh, then network manager detects that directly, but there might also be a logical error that you, for example, use the wrong IP address or you have a certain configuration that doesn't work. And for this, network manager also provides a solution, which is uh, using checkpoints where you can um, basically save the current state of network uh, settings uh, at a timeout. And in case you do not remove this checkpoint, it will automatically revert to this state. So if you're, for example, uh, having a little bit more complex setup, and this is uh, supported by the Ansible network Linux system role. Uh, this is, uh, it also makes it a lot easier, or at least for me to read and to understand what's going on in the system. So this is an example how uh, to set up the IP addresses on one interface. It's not the complete playbook that, that would look like this. So you still need to include the role and uh, specify the host. For it, uh, that you want to use, um, but this is basically basic Ansible stuff. And uh, I, I want to show you how to use this for a little bit more <coughs> real-world setup. So this, this would be using two Ethernet interfaces uh, over bonding for face safety and then create bridges, uh, like, like one bridge for the untagged interface and for certain VLANs additional bridges, which I was told is a common setup for uh, virtual machines. So if you want to have virtual machines that can use VLAN 29, you will add them to bridge 29 and so on. I was wondering, just for reality check up, is any one of you using such a setup uh, in production? So please raise your hand. Yeah, so at least a few people. So it's good to know that this is a good example, I guess. Uh, so uh, let's take a look how this would look like. So yeah, I have um, the playbook for the more complex example, which uses the Linux system roles, network role. And uh, for example, I specify the bridge also with an, uh, the untag bridge, PS0, um, at this point, uh, with an IP address, then um, make sure that the uh, um, bond zero is part of the bridge, and uh, another bridge for VLAN 29 with an IP address, uh, for VLAN 29 with an IP address, and also the VLAN is part of the bridge, and also specify that the bond. Um, consists of the two uh, devices, ETH1 and ETH2. And, excuse me. Uh, so um, just to run this, uh, one needs to call Ansible Playbook and then call this Playbook. And we can uh, see uh, all the connections uh, appearing on the system. Or for some reason, the VLAN interface didn't come up. That's strange. Yeah, but basically, usually it works. Uh, so, <laughs> so it uh, might also be uh, caught something from my call. And um, with this, uh, so for example, if uh, the Ansible, so the Ansible wall also uh, creates a checkpoint and um, the wall back, and then for example, if something would break inside the wall, then network manager would be there to at least restore the previous configuration state. So you're not, uh, like, like in this uh, complex state, um, we didn't have any verification that actually everything worked, but 
that's something that uh, I will come to next. So let me skip to the slides again. So advantages uh, of this is, uh, of course, you can use the power of Ansible for automation. You have the inventory. You can do conditional settings on some things. And for example, by using the Ansible effects, you could also set up specify interfaces by name. You could also say, apply this profile to the interface that's at PCI address so-and-so. So you are a lot less likely to have any problems because the naming schema uh, changes. You have automatic error handling and additional uh, support with checkpoint restore and error. There are some disadvantages to, to this. You always need Ansible. So if you just want to configure your local system, using Ansible for this might be a little bit of overkill. And um, it's still based, uh, it's based on profiles. Uh, so you do not necessarily configure the interfaces, but you configure profiles for the interfaces, which has advantages, but also uh, adds complexity. And there's, uh, Ansible is not directly an API to use by other tools. You don't have reporting, maybe yet, so we might change this. And currently, you cannot do partial changes. And uh, a solution for this is another project I'm working on, which is called NM State. It's written in Python. Uh, also, let's take a look at this. So it uh, has, for example, a command line tool. You can uh, use NM State CTL show, and then you get the current network configuration, which is uh, in the same format as the um, actual configuration uh, that it also accepts. Um, so here we see, for example, this is the bridge 29 for the VLAN. And uh, then with it, you can, could also, uh, you can easily edit um, interface. For example, again, change the IP address. <coughs> And um, it also has, um, so additionally, it also supports checking whether the runtime state after applying this matches the requested state and uses uh, checkpoints and fallbacks. And for example, if I request something that it cannot really fulfill, like an uh, MTU that's just too high, then you will uh, get um, an error and it will uh, fall back to the previous state and tell you what's wrong, and uh, you can, of course, since it's Python, also um, use it uh, with any other tool. Uh, so for example, uh, show it, and then if you have the configuration, you could use lib nmstate.apply, nm so excuse me. Uh, so this is currently uh, the signature of the function, so you could also disable the ver internal verification uh, of the change. For example, if you want to do uh, your own verification at some point and don't, um, uh, and, and you can also then, for example, um, um, keep the checkpoint living and then um, if you are additional verification, for example, if you want to do functional tests, if you can really reach a server and, uh, and it doesn't work, then you can still roll back uh, to the configuration that was saved before you started the configuration. <coughs> and, uh, oh, I'm a little bit over time, so just a very quick uh, look at the roadmap for network system roles. So what would also be interesting and where it would be good that we can have profiles instead of just network configuration is to uh, allow configuration based on LLDP information. So you could already store a bunch of profiles on the system and then, uh, for example, in case you see multiple interfaces providing the same VLAN interface based on LLDP, we will automatically create a bond interface for this. Make, uh, then make the PCI address more native and of course, always add more settings, maybe also add reporting. For NM state, um, we are also working on full Ansible support, so you can also use the simplified syntax via Ansible and have plugins for missing features. 
maybe provide a Wilding interface so you can easily use other languages to interface with it, because it's currently only Python, and uh, some other ideas that we have as well. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, here you can find um, more information about the different projects. You can also write me an email. And what are your questions? It uh, actually uses the API. Ah, sorry. The question was whether or not uh, what the Ansible world does, whether it lays down a file or calls NMCLI. And the answer is it uses the a library, libnm, directly. So it implements all, uh, everything based on the um, network manager library. So the other question was, what do I think of systemd network D? I also think it's an improvement over um, init scripts configuration, but it uh, still has the um, downside that it's, uh, uh, from the idea it's a one-shot configuration service, so you lay down configuration files, you have, uh, which is at least better than having shell scripts, but it's also supposed to only run once uh, at boot time, set up everything, and you might still, um, for example, if you want to change things, you, you might also sometimes need to clean up behind it. For, uh, like when you remove things, it doesn't uh, know this. And also, um, you, you don't have, uh, as far as I know, this API that you can uh, like talk to a library to write these configuration files, but you have to write them yourself or with some templating engine. Uh, what's your question? So does that mean So the question was, uh, when using systemd network D and the Ansible network wall together, whether this would conflict at boot time. So the problem is the wall only works with um, network manager and with the old init scripts system, but it also only has like the advanced features using network manager. And therefore, if you use both systemd networking D and the wall, you will have conflicts. And uh, it's not sure what will happen, actually. Yeah. Okay, any features that you would like, that you are missing, that you, you would, oh, there's a question. You repeat the history of changes, so you can, when you analyze what, what went wrong, you can see that what was the state changes in the past. Okay, so the question was whether or not we take a history of changes, and uh, the answer is currently no, because, but since the input uh, is usually YAML files with Ansible, I think it's expected that you would, uh, have them under, re under re revision control anyhow, and so adding this uh, additionally on the server might just add uh, unnecessary complexity. But it's a good idea to keep in mind. Okay, so the remark was that network scripts is still maintained. It, they are still running on Facebook. Okay, maybe I wasn't clear about this. I didn't say it was not maintained completely. It's more like it's on live support, so you won't see like really new features. And thank you very much for your attendance. Uh, time is over.